The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding feast was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper sort till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. St John tells us that the first miracle Jesus performed took place at a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. And in describing this scene, he includes an important detail. He says that Jesus works the first of his miracles at his mother's request. Mary's maternal heart could not but take pity on this unfortunate couple when it became clear that there is a shortage of wine at their marriage feast. It stirs her to act as intercessor and ask her son for a miracle. So here in the New Testament, we have an important teaching that Christians everywhere would do well to note. So influential is Our Lady's intercession that God will listen to all petitions made through her. This little drama at Cana looks ahead to the Catholic doctrine of Mary's mediation of graces, Mary's continued protective care of all her ecclesial children as their spiritual mother, her permanent presence in the church as our special intercessor, gaining for us the grace of her son. For this reason, Mary is known under the title Mediatrix of Graces. It is what, in the Middle Ages, St. Bernard of Clairvaux explains when he said that while Christ is the fount of life, Mary is the aqueduct for the same waters. On another occasion, he said that God willed that we should have nothing that did not pass through the hands of Mary, even her son. This teaching about the role of Mary as our intercessor 
before God, which we find in the New Testament, was picked up very early on in the church. In the third century, a prayer was composed which specifically asks for Mary's intercession. Some of you may know it. It's called the Sub Tuum. It goes, we fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. That prayer dates from the very first centuries of the church. A little later, we encounter a group of Christian thinkers known as the Philotheotokoi, literally the lovers, Philo of the mother of God, Theotokos. One of them, called Germanus of Constantinople, wrote a beautiful prayer which expresses his confidence in the intercessory power of Our Lady. It goes, Mary, full of kindness and compassion, who, apart from your Son, cares so much about mankind as you, who unceasingly protects us in our distress, who intercedes for us as sinners as you do. As a mother, you have freedom and influence with your Son. You use your intercession to save us. Now, in more recent times, we have been given exceptional manifestations of Mary's continued presence as our spiritual mother in the various apparitions of Mary. And it's been suggested that the common feature of Mary's apparitions, whether it be at Fatima or at Lourdes or wherever, include Our Lady's youthfulness, her tenderness, her sorrow when speaking of sin, and her smile. It is though her intercession is arranged by Christ to make us appreciate by the idea of this woman who has nothing of the judge about her, his own will to pardon and save us. I mentioned in the introduction this morning that since the 20th of October, this church has been a shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary. In other words, it has been designated as a place to come and seek Our Lady's intercession. As we celebrated that wonderful inaugural mass of the shrine, it occurred to me at the time that what we were doing in one sense was reliving that moment in the upper room we heard about in our first reading. Just like the first disciples, we were gathered together in prayer with Mary, asking God to pour out his blessings on those present, on this place, and on those who come here on pilgrimage. And that is what we are doing at this day with Mary, gathering together like the first disciples in the upper room at Pentecost in the company of Our Lady. And as we do so on this first day with Mary at England's first shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary, let us turn to our mother and ask for her prayers to keep us strong in faith, in hope and in charity, to guide our growth in holiness, confident that her prayers are always heard before the throne of God. So confident of Our Lady's perpetual intercession for her children, we present our needs to the Father of Mercy. We pray for the Church throughout the world. May she grow to be ever more like Mary, the model and mother of the Church. Lord, hear us. We pray for this newly established Rosary Shrine. May those who come here on pilgrimage be brought to a deeper knowledge of the mysteries of salvation and so more fervently proclaim the truth of the Gospel. 
Lord, hear us. We pray for priests. We ask Mary, mother of the priesthood, to intercede for priests everywhere. May they be strengthened and encouraged by our prayers. Lord, hear us. We pray for families. May the Holy Family of Nazareth be their inspiration and guide. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who approach Our Lady in their need. May their prayers be answered and their hearts enlivened. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who have died. May they enjoy eternal light and peace with Mary and all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. And let us ask for Our Lady's maternal intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord and God, we make our prayers with confidence in your mercy, and we know that Our Lady's intercession is powerful in your sight, for she is the mother of your Son, through whom we make all our prayers, Christ who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. 